welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make my decoupage eggs, uh, how I decorate this. But before I do, I thought I would talk a bit about Easter decorations. One of my lovely subscribers asked me um, she had seen in some videos that especially we here in Scandinavia are decorated, decorating with eggs and feathers and chickens and she wondered why if I knew the history and I knew some of it but it made me curious so I have done a bit of investigation um, have you ever seen this guy lay eggs? No, of course you haven't and I haven't either. We, I'm certain all of you know that rabbits or bunnies are mammals and they give birth to live children. They do not lay eggs. You don't have to live in the country to countryside to know that. And the next question I got was, what has this guy or this egg to do with this guy? Some people have tried to make a connection, at least with the eggs, uh, but as far as I've uh, found out, they have nothing to do with each other. So. Uh, what is the history behind this? Um, as I talked about in my video about Lent, I, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below. Um, most of our religious celebrations are uh, come, stems from a heathen or pagan uh, tradition. Uh, and Easter or Lent is an old celebration of changing of the seasons, where we go from winter to spring. And uh, what they celebrated was fertility. Uh, of course, in those days, fertility, not, not only uh, humans' fertility, but the animals' fertility or uh, the fertility in the nature, uh, like growing uh, of crops and things like that, was important uh, to survive. And therefore, uh, they used things from nature, um, and I think eggs were one of them. Another explanation is that when spring comes, the hens the chickens, the chickens mother, I've learned that that is called hen, a hen, they begin to lay more eggs. And then when our countries were uh, Christianed, um, and as I said in my video about Lent, this is the days where we're supposed to fast. And that is a tricky combination when the hens start to lay a lot of eggs and you're not supposed to eat them. So what they did was they hard boiled the eggs so that they would hold until the fast was over. And then they start decorating them. So I think therefore that's one reason why we decorate with the eggs. Um, another is that uh, egg is a kind of symbol of fertility. But, and in Norway, uh, we are kind of a sober uh, people, uh, so the Easter bunny is not a big part of our Easter traditions. Uh, it's beginning to uh, appear now in the shops, uh, but it, for us, I think it's considered an um, English or American tradition. And it's actually a German tradition. 
And when the uh, Germans emigrated to uh, America, they took these traditions with them. And for those of you that, that have had rabbits, you know that they can make a lot of babies really fast. Uh, they have a great fertility. Uh, so they too are a symbol of fertility. How the eggs and the bunnies were connected, I don't know. But the myth or the story is that the bunny lays eggs and decorate them and hide them. Um, there have been some who have tried to link at least these two. Uh, one story is that the egg symbolizes the rebirth of Christ. Again, I think that's very far-fetched. Um, another theory or another story is that when Mary came to the grave of Jesus, she had a basket of eggs and when she came to the grave, the eggs changed color. Again, I think that that is the religion leaders uh, attempt to explain away the heathen traditions. So, okay, a little history lessons today, but that at least is what I found out about the explanation. So, back to today's topic, which is, uh, as I said, these decoupage Easter eggs. I know I have a lot of creative subscribers, so I'm sure that decoupage is not a new uh, technique for you. And many of you, I'm sure, have tried. Um, so I'm, I'm going to show how I do it, but uh, I, I know that uh, maybe many of you already know. But maybe you can get some ideas on how you can use decoupage uh, and Easter eggs in your tradition. This is actually my daughter's uh, Easter egg. I'm sure many of you can relate. She's 25. She never gets too old to get an Easter egg. Um, they used to be this size and <laughs> it has grown grown a bit. Uh, when she was small she would get these smaller eggs with candy inside but now that she's a grown woman I fill it with gift cards, makeup, DVDs, a bit of candy, a lot of nice treats. Uh, I keep it as decorations until Easter and then uh, at Easter evening she gets the egg and when she has emptied it I get it back so I fill it every year and as I said in my uh, haul video um, the eggs the tradition is as I said these are paper or cardboard eggs this is actually the second time I filmed this video. The last one was too bright and I was holding things over the camera so you can see so I had to do the whole thing over again. So unfortunately I have painted all the eggs already but you saw in the hall one example of how the eggs look. They are not this white, I have as I said painted it. But the tradition is to uh, fill them with candy and give them to children. And I decorate, as you saw in my intro today, I use these eggs in my de decor. Different motives and different sizes. When I find a, a type of crafting that I like, I, haven't, I have a tendency to uh, uh, mass produce. 
I don't know if you're the same, but it started with the eggs, but then I also began to do it on glass. I used um, it's a frosted uh, varnish and a matte varnish that I used. This is an uh, empty uh, jar. It used to be jam in this jar. So I collect them when they're empty and I use this for this kind. This is a, a lantern, small lantern. And I made uh, other containers or uh, jars. Uh, you saw that my branch now I have decorated with these small hanging decoupage eggs. I made jewelry boxes and bird uh, bird houses, hearts. Yeah, you can make a lot with this technique. So that is what I'm going to show you today. I'll turn the camera down so you can see how I make my eggs. Okay guys, so I'll start by showing you what you need to make these uh, eggs. And of course the first thing you need is an egg or something to do the decoupage on. And as I said, I have already painted this egg with two coats of white acrylic paint. It's just ordinary crafting paint. Uh, you can use anything. Uh, I would recommend that you use something water-based. Uh, it's the easiest. And then you need some uh, motives or some napkins. And I have been quite fortunate here because uh, a woman I went to school with and her husband have made some beautiful napkins and tissues. They have used old postcards, very old postcards, and made them into beautiful napkins. Um, they come in uh, different sizes. Uh, and of course, as I've said earlier, I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to my hobbies or my crafting. So I have bought enough napkins to be able to decoupage the rest of my life, I think. So uh, they have these old, beautiful, different motives. And what's great about these napkins is that they have easy motifs to cut out. Uh, some of them have a bit of writing. I like that. I use that on my eggs. And also the background is fairly uh, bright. Uh, most of them are in uh, white or cream or a light grey. And that may and that make them suitable for uh, for decoupaging. I don't have to be as exact when I uh, cut the motifs out, as you uh, will see when we start. So, and it's the napkins that decides how, of course, how how the eggs will will turn out. So I use these kinds of motive and also some with flowers on and I combined and overlapped these kinds of motifs. In my haul you also saw me buy these napkins with these cute bunnies. I have already tried to make an egg with this bunny and I wasn't uh, very pleased with this and that's because of the mud podge. I earlier I never used these this kind of mud podge. 
I bought it because I know that for many of you it's a well-known brand uh, and, and it's a good mud podge or a good glue, kind of glue or varnish but I usually use this one which is from my local crafting store and this is more matte than this and therefore I like this better so if you want a glossy finish of course you have to use a mud parch a kind of mud parch that's not matte I wanted it matte and and as you can see uh, here or maybe another egg this one I don't know if the camera if it shows on camera but this is way more glossy than this and I li like this matte finish better but it's of course uh, it comes down to your taste what you like okay so you have napkins you have mud parts you have uh, paint you of course are going to need pencils for the paint and for the mud budge uh, and to make the eggs that's actually all you need and and the scissors of course to cut out the motives I also as you can see here I also decorate my eggs with ribbon and feathers on some I used use uh, a little bit of glitter and so again comes down to what you like I often use some glitter and this kind of uh, ribbon it's a kind of crochet I think I don't know what you call it we call it blondebom in Nor Norwegian um, and I'll, I also use a kind of, um, just have to find it, this kind of silky ribbon. Um, I also like to use this hemp thread together with, again, I like this pretty with the, with the more rustic. Sorry, okay, so my battery died on me, but I've changed it, so... Um, yeah, you saw the different things I decorate the eggs with, the glitter, and the ribbon, and uh, yeah. Just use your imagination. I also use feathers on a lot of, of mine. Sometimes I do it like I've done it here, I take the bow across this was actually the egg the first egg i made uh, or filmed uh, for you um, so sometimes i take the ribbon this way other times i take the ribbon this way yeah so just use your imagination okay so we are ready to start um and as i said the first thing i do is to paint the egg with the acrylic paint uh, and two coats use something water-based um, that's the easiest and when the paint is dry you're ready to uh, start decoupaging and on my eggs today I'm going to use the I often I'll try to make the same egg as I did the first time uh, this is the motive I often use of uh, these two cute children kissing um, yeah so I start by cutting out the motive and as I said with these napkins I don't have to be very exact when I cut out uh, I don't th uh, they are supposed to look a bit vintage so I don't mind if the edges so show a bit or the background 
is showing if you don't like that you have to be more exact when you when you cut the motifs out and all napkins have at least two layers some even have three or four and you only want the top layer uh, you can either before you cut take away the bottom layers uh, it gets very uh, thin and delicate so I think it's easier so I don't rip it to first cut out the motive and then uh, take away the bottom layers and it can be a bit tricky sometimes it's easy and sometimes you have to work a bit to get the top just the top layer this was an easy one this is a three layer napkin like that and then and i'll just have to get something to uh, pour the mud pot on okay i use these uh, paper plates i only had red it doesn't go with a today's color scheme but i'm sure we still we will shall survive just pour some of the mud podge on the plate and then i use a soft brush and i don't cover the whole egg with the mud podge right away just i try to see where it's going and then i'll try to take the mud podge just on the parts where the motive is going so so that the mud podge don't dry before i'm ready to to apply a new another motive I just pencil on a pretty good layer I have to stop to use these cheap pencils because they're shred, shred, shedding and then you place your motive where you want it and this is now so thin and when it's get and when it gets wet you cannot start moving it around it will rip then you take another it's, it's the same technique i used when i made my my uh, valentine wooden hearts you take uh, another coat of mud podge over the motive this wrinkles a bit because of the shape of the eggs i don't mind uh, again because this is supposed to be a kind of rustic looking decor and i use very light strokes feathery strokes with a pencil like that And now I'm ready to apply my flowers. I use these. These. Uh, these are tissues with beautiful pink roses on. And use the same technique these tissues have uh, as you can see they have some writing on them and i'm going to use that also so i'm a bit careful when i cut out so i don't destroy it and 
and these two have a white background so I don't have to be as exact when I cut out so just roughly cutting around like this and again separating the top layer from the underlying layers and I see where I want it I'll take this on this side hope you can see now I have really worked to get the lighting okay I finally found a button on my my camera that where I can regulate uh, how bright I want it Eureka yes okay so I I'm going to put this here I let it with a bit of an overlay is that what it's called in English? yeah, I think so and the glue or the varnish is white as you can see when you apply it but it will dry clear like that so now I just continue to apply flowers all around and usually I do my bottom and my top the same but again if you want a top and the bottom and you want them different you, you do you I do it like this so I'll finish this up with the motifs and when they have dried I take a second coat of Mod Podge all over sorry that is petted <laughs> moaning in the background uh, I take a second layer of Mod Podge let it dry and I'll come back when I'm ready to decorate the egg okay so then my now my eggs are dry um, and this is how they turned out and I also finished the rabbit one and I attached a little bow and some bling and now I'm going to decorate them so if you if you were to use the eggs of course you would not glue them together um, when I know I'm not going to use them for anything just decorations I usually glue them together so I'll start by doing that and this is just ordinary Craft, crafting glue, quick glue you could probably use the glue gun here but Ooh.
I used a lot of uh, a lot of my patch on this one so the top lock or the top has expanded a bit not a good reason to glue it together I'll just leave that there and I'm also going to glue together the rabbit or the bunny egg hope the lighting is okay now because it's starting to get dark outside. Like that. Okay. So I think I'll use the stamp on this. And I haven't used this for a long time, so I think it's a bit dry, but we'll try. like that it's not it's not easy to see but use the, the crocheted ribbon and again if you were to use this you would not glue it but if you're not going to fill it and use it you might as well glue it so it holds holds its place And again, I'm using this crafting glue. I don't like using the glue gun for this because I think the glue often, you can see the glue, so. Probably. don't have to use it. the eggs are beautiful without any more decorations on but for me more is more You could, as I said earlier, use the hemp thread and on this one I think I might do that. And 
I had some, these are actually bought in America 10 years ago. I thought I might try and see if I can use that. Just tie up a little bone. And maybe a feather as well. like that and the one I made for you last time that you didn't see but I I made it I you see I've used uh, the crocheted uh, ribbon and the silk ribbon of these two silky ribbons white and pink let's see how that turns out I've seen a lot of the ladies on YouTube decorating tiered trays, two tiered trays and two tiered, three tiered trays, that was difficult. Uh, and these eggs I think would look lovely on a tray like that. about this maybe it's, it was better without the ball but just to show you different 
like this. On this you could you could make a tiny arlene bow uh, have a bow around this way instead and have a kind of arlene bow on top that would be cute or some small flowers or yeah it's just the imagination use the imagination i think they turned out pretty and this is from last time so that's my decoupage eggs okay guys that was my decoupage eggs I hope you got inspired and that you all will try. Um, this isn't especially Norwegian decor. Uh, decoupage is an old technique I'm sure many have used as I said and, and in Norway as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new, please uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. I upload about once or twice a week. I don't have a, a set day yet. Uh, I'm too, too new to dare to <laughs> promise uh, a video on a certain day. Uh, but I keep them coming as quick as I can. I've been a YouTube creator now for about a month and it has been so much fun. I love it. Uh, I already have about 628 subscribers now, I think. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, I'm so thankful. Um, I love your comments, you leave so nice comments. Uh, I'm a bit dyslectic, so <laughs> if there are any spelling mistakes, uh, that's why. I'm always nervous I'm going to write something wrong. But um, And uh, the English is still a uh, uh, work in progress. Um, I have to Google the words and uh, and then write. So it takes me a long time, but I enjoy getting to know you. So please keep the comments coming. And uh, the last time you asked some questions, and that's great. It gives me, gives me idea on what I can um, on new videos. Uh, if there anything you you any question you have please just uh, ask and I will try to to answer them I have a lot to uh, work on yet lighting and filming and English and but I hope I'm getting better with each video my next video will be on my tablescape and I was hoping that was what I'm going to film today, but I had to do this uh, again. I have been emptying the nila shops around where I live for magnolia flowers. And I have begun to, to try out some ideas and I look forward to doing that. I think it will be um a very nice uh I a good idea so um looking forward to bringing that to you have a lovely weekend and again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in a few days bye